Welcome back to another video on data to decisions. In the recent videos, we've been using the NFL data from ESPN.com, dynamically pulled from the website, and creating interactive cool visuals. So in the previous videos, we saw the weekly schedule being created, um, which is interactive for any given week that you choose. Uh, and at the same time, we did a team schedule which is by choosing a specific team, you can see the schedule for that team. Now, in this video, we're gonna see the standing visual, which summarizes the latest standings of all the teams broken down into the divisions. And in order to do so, we'll be using the data from the standings table, which is again, you know, previous video, we saw how we imported the data or connected to the data from ESPN.com. We will also be using a little table here on the right, which is, giving us the division information. And we'll be using these two together in order to create the standings visual. Uh, we'll be pulling in the logos dynamically. Again, as much as possible, this is dynamic. Um, so you can use some of these techniques that we use or apply here to other cases also. This is not limited to only using these type of data. Uh, it could be applied to other uh, scenarios that you come across in your workplace as well. So I look forward to hearing from you some of the scenarios where you could find these useful, uh, but uh, let's get started. We will first start with how can we bring the division information because the final visual that we want is by the division. So for example, there are eight divisions so it's AFC East, North, Southwest, NFC East, North, Southwest. So we have data on the team division table where we have the team abbreviation and then the division they belong to. But we want to make sure that this is connected to the standings data. Standings table has the team abbreviation and it has the win record, loss record, ties, and winning percentage. So this is the extremely important piece that we want, but we also want it by the uh, division so we can group the teams together in the same division. So for the first thing, I will just do a division column here, and then I will be pulling information using a lookup function to say this team abbreviation, go to the team division table, and uh, from that column, and then match it and give me back the division column value. I will close and now I have the division as well. So now that I have everything into a single table, now I can easily um, create my uh, output in a new sheet and I'm going to call it as standings visual. And here we will start creating our final output. Um, so in order to first do this, so I'm going to write down I AFC, let's say East, okay? And then I'm going to do formula using filter function. And in this case, I'm going to go to the standings table, but I want this only for the teams where the division is uh, AFC. Another catch here is that we don't have the abbreviation column here. It, it's over here in column O. Uh, what we want extracted from here, it's actually in uh, not together. So they are non-adjacent columns. So in order to pull that, so I'm going to use a different technique. Uh, I, we will use the filter function, but first we have to do an index within the filter. And here I would say, go to the standings table. Okay, and then um, we we had a previous video where we explained um, how this works, but I will do a sequence and rows of standings table. So this basically pulls all the rows uh, from the standings table. So uh, which columns do I want from the standings table? This is where I can customize it. I will do a flower brackets, open the curly brackets, and then choose the number of the column. So second column is the win-loss record. So second is win, third is loss. But which column is team abbreviation? So if I had counted them correctly before, um, I would know exactly. So let's just do uh, for now two, three, four. Okay. So I want the second column, third column, fourth column. I also want the fifth column. I will close my curly brackets and then uh, if I close parenthesis, I'm basically closing my index function. 
Now I can do a comma and then apply my filter condition. What is my filter condition? I want the division. So standing stable division column should be equals to go back to my sheet and I say I click on this value. Okay. So I can just do D4. That should work. So let's close the filter function and hit and see what happens. You now have this information, but what we really want is this is win, loss, and then tie, and then winning percent. This is what we want. Okay. So clearly, the first one I wanted to be the name of the team or the abbreviation of the team. Let's go back here. Which column? is um so for example 15th column is the team abbreviation so i can go and change this to bring give me back 15th column and then give me all these things that's it so once again we did a index function we chose which columns we wanted we chose uh, the filter condition and now we got this nice table of only afc east teams. Um, I could do a sort on it to make sure that it is sorted in the order that we want. Sort by the first column, which is alphabetical, uh, if that's what you want, right? So if I do this, it will sort automatically by alphabetical. But if I wanted to sort it by the winning percentage, then I would do it by the uh, last column. So there's a be fifth column. So let me do that. And do I want it by ascending or descending? I want it by descending because I want the teams who have the highest uh, to come up there, right? So I can do descending and now this will switch. It was correctly um, ordered was because the standing stable itself, this itself is ordered uh, by the winning percentage and that's why it looked fine. But in your case, if you if you don't control the raw data coming in and the order, you want to make sure that you do the sort so that you are you know safe in seeing that you're always providing the list sorted by the highest winning percentage. In your data, it could be highest values of some other measures, but the concept still applies. You want to make sure that you apply the sort if your raw data is not going to be reliably sorted. Okay, so now we have this, so I can just copy this. And I'm going to paste in immediately following thing. And now this, I can change it to AFC North. Now let's see what happens. So you automatically get different teams. And that's because in our formula, we were pointing it to the cell above. And now that we change the cell, it still works correctly. So I can go back here. This one, I can do it as AFC South. And then I will repeat it for AFC West. Again, if I really wanted to, I can write some more formulas to make even this dynamic. But I think the focus of this video is about you can extract the data from another table, applying some simple you know, conditions, pulling non-adjacent columns together, right? Uh, and uh, and also we'll be doing some conditional formatting stuff as well. So I'm gonna select everything go to the right side and then paste everything we will get exactly the same thing right but i can just go and do a find and replace and say wherever you find afc just replace with nfc replace all there should be only four replacements and that is correct and again this is because i know the data we know what are the different divisions i can safely do these type of um, transformations so now I have all these uh, tables. Now it's about just making it look better. And so I'm just going to start, you know, formatting. So this is the standings. Apply. Okay, standings. So what I'm going to do is conditional formatting, new rule. And uh, this is going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to use a length function, len. If the length of my column D value, so let's say D4, is greater than three. That means it's not a team abbreviation, it's a section or a division. In if that's the case, then apply a different um, background fill for the entire row, and uh, the font could be different, okay? 
So let's be bold, hit OK. And wow, this is exactly not what I want. What happened here? I should have seen, um, I should have entered. I'm selecting all these rows. So that looks good. Now here's the catch. We always want to uh, lock the column D because the D is where you will find the division name. So the division names are going to be greater than three characters. So look it in D column, right? Lock it and then say, okay, apply. So now what happens is we have a really nice clean presentation of the conditional formatting applied only to the division headers. I want to do the same thing for the NFC on the right side as well. But before I do that, one more thing I would want to do on the AFC side is what if it is an, um, we'll do the usual banded rows kind of design where it's a row of D4. And uh, if it is an even numbered row, then fill it with the different pattern in background. That's maybe very lightly visible. I can even do a blue colored pattern, let's say, and hit OK, hit Apply. And I'll explain. Um, OK, so this is another often uh, important thing to follow when we do the conditional formatting is in the when you selected the values and the applies to should uh, you need to make sure that it applies to all the cells we want. So I want it to be applied to D4 to H23. So I'm going to select all of them. Apply. Now, here's the catch. So you see that now, as soon as we applied it, we lost the first one. And so I want to move this, the, the darker background fill. We appeared first. And then I want to stop applying after that is true. So this is where if you have multiple conditional formatting rules applied to the same cells, and if you want um, one to supersede or override the other, this is what you can do. So in this case, I am applying the rules, two rules to the same set of cells, but I'm just telling Excel, if you found this to be true, don't even go and evaluate for the next rule for that specific cell. So it's okay. Now, where is that design, the very you know uh, pattern that we try to apply? I do not see that happening. So let's go and check the second rule again. And if is even row of D4, let's go and check again whether I applied the pattern. Yes, I did. And let's try something different to see if it becomes noticeable. Yes, so it is just very light in color. So if you like that, or if that's too dark, you can tone that down. And now it just blends with the, with the color of my background of the canvas. So that's why it's not very easily visible. Okay. So this is, once again, it's your personal preference from an aesthetic perspective. You can change it. Uh, according to your needs, but the idea is to uh, give it a little bit. I can do the color as, yeah, this should be more visible. That's what I will stick with for now. Okay, now I'm gonna, I need to apply the similar things to the NFC side. So I'm gonna go and say conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula, and if the length of J4, lock the J, greater than 3, then it is a header. So I want to apply the background fill. Uh, and then I will do a font of uh, this color and then a bold. OK. OK. There you have it. So we got it nicely done. And then I will do another conditional formatting. This time we will do the even rows of J4 and we will do the formatting as this and this, okay? 
there you have it. I have missing the closing parenthesis. I've done that. And once again, the same thing. If you have two rules that apply, you want to make sure that you order them. And then I will say stop. If I don't say stop, both will get applied. So I'm going to hit stop if true. And then OK. So now I have exactly what I want. That is it for this video. Um, so we started from the standings table and then we had the, the team division table. We brought it together and then we created the visual step by step with very simple formulas, uh, primarily the filter function. And then we did some conditional formatting to make it appear the way we want. And uh, it's completely flexible, simple techniques to create the visuals um, in a more dynamic way. And also, uh, as we saw in the previous videos about this topic with NFL data, we, we can do a lot of interactive visuals as well using this data. I look forward to hearing from you, your suggestions. Please post them in the comment section. If you have any suggestions for me to do for the next video, please let me know. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you soon.